I don't, I don't fully know if I actually feel like it, but we're gonna do it anyways. There's not much I can already see from looking at the sides I drove by. I don't think there's gonna be anything in there, but may as well have a look. Way to start a video. Hey, what's up, Garden and Friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, I'm at Walmart. I need some, want, correction, I would like to get some pansies. Just put around some planters and get some color going in the backyard. And I figured I'd start with Walmart because there are a few other places I have to go and it was just the first stop on the way down the big chain of stores here. Oh, never mind. The doors are locked. That happens like probably two out of three times that I come here. I have people ask, Jeff, why don't you go to Walmart? That's why. It's not like it's early either. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, so there's no reason that I can think of that those doors should be locked. But ever since COVID, which was four years ago, these doors are locked almost every single time I come here. Not missing anything. See, it's just a few palm trees and some bulbs. Not missing anything. Just go to Lowe's instead. They will definitely have a lot more to look at. That's fun. I like that. A few new pots from last year. At least ones that I hadn't seen. They had the bubble planters before. I bought one of those last year. They may have not even moved anything new out yet. It, this feels like it's plastic. It's $1,400. That's really? $1,400? Cute and all, but that doesn't seem quite right. House plants. They're looking pretty good, too. It's nice little calatheas that have some nice healthy leaves on them. Bromeliads are a little dry. But I've seen them look way worse than that before. Belgian waffle. Okay. The variegated hemigraphus. Fun plant. Nice color. The skindapsis are looking good. Different take on the self-watering planters. I like the moonlights. They have that fun silvery sheen to them. Lots and lots and lots of bamboo. Have some little mixed arrangements here that look those look nice mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah those are fun ah rabbit's foots great ferns if you like ferns but you don't do well with them this is a really good one to start with man you used to be able to find these in just the regular plastic pot that you would have in like the these things over here it's actually might have some here's one right here there we go it's cheaper i assume 5.98 yeah better deal you can pick out your own pot and these things you'll have it forever they're great ferns sturdy because they have a nice strong root system so even if the plant dies back as long as you didn't overwater it you go ahead and give it a drink and it'll spring back for you if they were overwatered they need to probably unpot it let it dry out and give it another shot i love the mini orchids they're so stinking cute i really wish when companies put their fun little names on plants especially on plants that are common ones like these adansonis there's a description to go along with them proven winners does that a lot they have like these crazy names for some other plants that look like any other plant like some of the caladiums right they just look like they're caladiums you could get anywhere but they give it a name and everything and there should be a description it would be helpful like what is it that made this plant so special that we're giving it a name why is it called a little swiss just some constructive criticism not really a gripe it would just be nice if there were something else to go along with these names. I think it would just help sell products. Oh, oh this is nice. Look, it, we've got ranunculus, and I'm already seeing some primulas, some shrubbery. I'm not seeing any pansies, but that's okay. Frost kiss. That's really pretty. Drift roses are out, and they're looking good. Got the blushing something. I can't remember what it's called. Lemon drift. Might just be blushing drift. Lemon drift and blushing, I don't know. Oh, they're so colorful and happy. I just, I know it's too early. I want to get them, but it's too soon. Plenty of knockout roses. I don't hate them. I hated them for a while. They're growing on me again. Lots of dianthus. Smells fantastic up here. I love the way dianthus smells. Wish it grew better. It's just, it's one of those plants where I'll buy like one a year, but after that, that's about as much as I can do with them because they just fizzle out so much during the summer that it's not worth it for me. But in the spring, probably let's say March through May, they're great. But when it gets really hot, I always have issues with them rotting out in the middle if I don't keep them pruned right. And I don't have time for all that. I really keep them pruned properly. Those are cute. I like those. Oh, never mind. I found the PNCs. 
<laughs> that's it. That's all they have. Okay, that was fun. Nope, no transition. Let's try Home Depot. These are cute. I remember people raving over these things last year. I don't know. I have no idea what that sound is. Something's going on over here in this corner. Little woven bird baskets. Some bird basket bird houses with the moss. It's fun, I suppose. Lots of flowers. Just spring stuff. Obviously, it's spring. And it's March 4th, so they wouldn't have much out anyways. But it's like a pretty good selection of bulbs. Halibores. Gotta love them. There's her white with a blush pink on the inside. I wish they'd label the bulbs. That would be nice. Like I would just assume that these are a dwarf variety, but I have no idea. They're giving me tete-a-tete -tete vibes. Like I said, there's no way to know for sure if they don't actually have a label. They just say daffodil yellow. I do feel like somewhere on these last year I was able to find a name on them. Yeah, for these right here, tete-a-tete. -tete. So those are labeled, the ones in the back aren't. That's good to know, $2.99. It's not terrible because it looks like there's about three bulbs in each pot. Get around to fall planting or maybe all your bulbs died or the squirrels dug them up. That's what happened to me. It's a backup. Yeah, like the variegated ajugas, the bugle weeds. I love them. Let me go closer. You can't see those. There we go. Very nice, right? Love them. Lots of different types of variegated bugle weeds. Ajugas. Great plants. Nice ground covers. They always have the best prices on these ewes here. These are the Hixii, and last year I planted Hixii and Hillii ewes along well, different spots in the yard and into some planters. Probably, I can't remember which I put where, and I need two more of one of those types to put on the back berm behind the laurels in my yard. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about, because the dogs or something, I don't know, two of them are just gone. They just vanished. I'd want to blame the dogs, but I don't think it was the dogs. They're just gone. They have been for months, and I keep forgetting to mention that somehow a couple of shrubs just vanished. I don't know where they went. These are beautiful. Hortzman. Hortzman, and then Hortzman. <laughs> Atlas Cedars. Look how full those are. They look really nice. Like your contorted filberts. Are these the filberts? I think the filberts are the one that get the worms on them. Yeah. Filbert. Fun plants. Anyone else? Always have to battle with Kathleen Turner just screaming in their head whenever you see a pussy willow. It's look nice too. Everything's fresh. It just came in. So they're still wrapped up. I like the Oregon green. Really full pine. So full. And as they get bigger, those branches come out and they all push up. Kind of like a candelabras. That's what the new growth ends up looking like on them. They stay not small. I mean, 10 to 12 feet for a pine. It's pretty small. But I feel like I've seen them bigger than that. It just, it takes them a while. Really cold hardy. Nice size peaky winky standards. Price is okay. Price on the big standards has gone way up on the hydrangeas. There's some local nurseries around here that sell the strawberry vanilla like the ones I have for like 350 to 500 bucks for ones this size. I think I paid 60 or 70, something like that, several years ago. That might get better. You know, I was just thinking, okay. Lots of ADD just happened. Hold on. I need to reboot. Finish my first thought. I think that that's going to get better. I think prices on some things are going up, but on other things are going to start coming back down when it comes to things being standardized, as long as it's one that's been standardized for a long time. I was just thinking when I was walking around the corner and shopping around that I would love to start seeing Taylor junipers at the big box stores because they're such great plants. They're a great juniper. They have a really nice formal look to them. And wow, that's a good price. They're not huge, but still, those would probably be like a hundred bucks at most of it. Which, by the way, I love supporting the local nurseries. It's the only reason I didn't buy pansies at Lowe's. I ended up finding a few 12 packs that were 14 bucks. I was like, no, I don't think so. I'll go to a local nursery if I'm going to spend 14 bucks on a 12 pack. Actually, it'd be cheaper. I think most local nurseries, it's $5.99 per six pack. So, you know, you do that math. It'd be cheaper to go to the nurseries. These are nice and big. And look at how big these ewes are. They didn't have them this big last year. Huh. That's tempting. That's really tempting. I wish they were unwrapped. Not like I'm not gonna be back though. Oh, and these are excellent too. I'm really shocked at some of the things I'm finding right now, only because it's so early in the year. It's not that Lowe's and Home Depot, and I know Walmart, they get a good selection of stuff in, but I usually just kind of pop in for some filler annuals and some cheap filler shrubbery for like screening, those sorts of things. For this time of year, I'm seeing some great stuff. The dwarf ginkgos, these are awesome. They only get like, they say three to 10 feet. I don't know about that. I feel like I've seen them bigger than that. Not much though. 
And, but look how full these are. Really nice, full, healthy plants, and the price on them is... Okay, I know that seems steep. They're small. That's the thing. It takes them a long time to grow. So that plant right there with that really thick trunk and all that growth on it, someone's been working for a long time to get it to that size to have a nice bulky plant to start off with at home. It's not, you know, you're not buying a hibiscus here or, you know, it's like a limelight hydrangea, things that get huge. These stay small, so they're going to cost more. Okay, hold on. Optical illusion. I thought those hicks I used were great big and tall. No, they're stacked. They're on a pallet. Duh. Still an okay size, but it's about a third of how big as I thought it was. Still excited about those junipers. Those are nice looking junipers. Are they, is this an illusion too? No, okay, that's that's a good size for that price. I think I need to get out of here because I've almost fallen down the shrubbery hole a few times and I really think that buying shrubbery is something to do better planning with. Yeah, it's bad things are gonna happen. Oh man. Look at the little junipers. These are so stinking cute. The golden cones. Ah, I love those. I know, everybody needs to see the house plan. So here's a quick, quick, a quick peek. This is $110. Why? Why? The price in the Loratas has come down at pretty much every place I've ever been for over the last couple of years anyways. Is it just marked up because it's in this cheap ass ugly plastic pot? Is that what's doing it? That's why we're justifying 110 bucks for a 10 inch Lorata. $80 for a spider mite magnet that's only gonna live for maybe six months in your house. Okay, I need to cool it. I mean, look at this. This is little. It's like maybe three and a half feet tall. I'm seeing them at Costco and Sam's, Ikea. Those should be 40 to 60 bucks max. I should reel it in and take it easy. This is why I never take sponsorships because I can't be honest and just say, hey, that price is stupid. Ready for another abrupt change? I'm at Sam's. Great price on these pots, 30 bucks. The speaker's right over my head, I'm so sorry. 22 inch planters, 30 bucks, that's a great deal. I like these, these are self-watering and they're like 24 inches tall, I think. Something like that, 40 bucks. That's a really good price for self-watering containers this big. Self-watering containers, period. Those would be great, ah, the speaker. Hicks, the Hicks, yeah, these are the ones I have at home. Well, these were $30, not $40. Well, they're smaller. Not by a lot, but they are smaller. I'm home, if you couldn't tell. I know, no transition. It's just changing places all the time. It was really loud at Sam's. Normally I would have had some kind of like, hey, I'm gonna go home now, but the music was just way too loud. There were a few more pots, a fun swing, wasn't much else to show, so I just headed on out of there. Looks like I lost a U2. That's odd. These are really cold hardy. I wonder what happened here. There's still some green in there, so it has hope with something digging around the roots. Huh. The backside of the berm is apparently more cold. This is starting to show up. You know, winter damage, this is about the time of year we start to see it on the evergreens. At least here in St. Louis, usually around March into April is when all that brownage starts to show up on everything you can see. Things are much more cooked over here. That almost looks like sun damage though because usually the laurels go brown pretty quickly not so much into that whitish burnt color do you know what i mean I mean, you see that to me that looks more like burnt well it could be wind burn too wind burn mixed in with the sun because we've had some days where the temperatures are just fluctuating all over the place which is normal here for this time of year have days in the 80s and days in the 20s and 30s. Heck, what was it, I think, in last week's vlog? Did we talk about that? It was like 76 and then dropped to 24 that night, something like that, insane. But that could be contributing to some of that brownage. I'm not worried about it because I just noticed I'm seeing some buds. See that? See them in there? Maybe, because the camera went in and out of focus. That's a good sign. Didn't have any of that last year because, well, you know, they all died. I think it's safe to go ahead and take the lights off of these. Now, I had them on there just because I've been so paranoid after what happened last year, but we're into March. If it were to drop below zero, that would be extremely unusual. This has also been a really unusual year. So maybe I'll leave them on there just for like a couple more weeks. It would just make me feel better. Yeah, and anyways, back to the U's. Deviated very quickly. See, there's two that are just, they're just gone. 
I don't know where they went. I'm guessing at some point with the dogs running through here that they got pulled up and then somehow got mixed up with the yard waste in the fall time when all the leaves and things were being collected. I have no idea. They're just not here. Don't think that's ever happened before. I've never just lost a shrub. That's a leftover root ball from one of the laurels last year. I don't, I, I don't know why it's still here. I'm sure at some point I had a reason, but I don't know what it is now. I've done a good amount of growing. I'd say they're about the same size as the ones that are $40 this year they're ten dollars more but that's okay because those are going to match better size wise looks like i'm going to need one two i guess three because yeah that one looks like it still has some potential i should probably go ahead and pull it up my plan when i put these in was to plant some this year and then to plant some more next year so i'd get them really close together because i want this to be a tight hedge just in case we have another winter that knocks this hedge out there will be something back here it won't be for several years but in several years there'll be a nice green hitch here that is well, i was gonna say bulletproof but looking over here at this one maybe that's not the case but you know things happen with plants you win some you lose some when you plant a whole bunch of plants for a hedge you expect to lose some like um, arbs our poor vitaes those did not do well okay I, I initially came over here one was to check on those ewes so i can see if they are the hixii which they are so that's good i know i can go back grab a few more of those they'll have them they have them most of the season and because I was going to replant these daffodil bulbs that I think the squirrels dug up, I'm assuming that's what happened here. The problem is I don't remember where their original holes were. And this area, it doesn't look like it just yet, but in a few weeks, I have this entire area just full of bulbs. So I don't want to go digging in here if I'm going to end up digging up some of the other plants. So with the ones that are dug up, I think maybe I'll just, I don't know, stick them in a pot somewhere five that's a lot did i miss any are there any more i don't think so i'm starting to see some stuff coming up though and well there's also grass there's grass with strawberries this would be a good spot for them because well i think the majority of the bulbs i put in here all rotted and died i think i may have a different plan of action for bulbs next year and as far as the ones in the containers go basically every single bulb that i put in a container died did not come back so uh, i think i'm going to have to come up with a different plan for things next year and this container even the hellebores died this one is down too low and i think it's still solid so i'm gonna lift it up some because that root mass still seems good on it but i am just i'm shocked the hellebores this, there's a hellebore over there it died those can take a good amount of cold so i was surprised by that well kind of surprised the way things went this winter i'm not totally shocked by it and i get one of these daffodils back there just like that i'll go ahead and leave part of it up get another one over here drop another down there come over here these are all i believe that these are all the watch up daffodils oh yeah i'm trying to also get out where I dig the holes, trying to pull out the rotten bulbs. I want to plant them on top of rotten bulbs. That probably won't end all that well for them. Have another one in there, and then have another one that I'm going to try and just squeeze down in here into this container that that other hellebore was in. Uh, yeah, the watch up daffodils. I think that's what all these are. That one down there might be something different, but the rest of them look like the watch ups. I think they get 18 to 22 inches tall. Have a big white flower on them and they face upward. Must be pretty neat looking. I thought those would be fun to have in the garden because you walk around and have the daffodils looking up at you. Seemed neat. There are a lot more in the ground that are starting to pop up and are looking pretty good. But yeah, as far as those go, like I said, I just didn't want to dig holes in spots where I wasn't positive <laughs> whether or not uh, there were other things that haven't come up yet. I know, I need to take this inside. Here's the situation. It goes in the basement, and the basement right now is full of storage from all the stuff that's being moved around the house because new floors are being put in. So I just, I really don't have anywhere to put it. I'm sure it's bothering some people. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I think you're just going to have to try and get over it. But as I was saying a couple minutes ago before I started deviating, again, the plan of action I think for next year with the bulbs, ones that aren't going in the ground, would be to maybe just dig a big hole in the ground, stuff them all together, keep them organized in different patches, and then... In the spring, dig them up and move them into the containers. Seems like the safest way to go. Because for the most part, everything in the ground is seemingly okay. The tulips are coming up pretty patchy. Not shocked by that. But all the daffodils, other than the ones that the squirrels dug up, if they're in the ground, they've been good. And the containers, it's just a total wash. I'm not going to harp on this too much because I'm sure at the end of the month when we do a garden tour, I'll be talking about a lot more. But if I just put them in the ground, just find an area and, you know, dig down six inches or so dig it all up and for each different type 
just dump them, cover them. I think their odds will be much better that way. What do you think? Either that or stick them in a wine fridge. I think in the ground would probably be more affordable, but it doesn't hurt to always have an excuse to buy a new wine fridge. Got the fountain up and running. Did that this morning. It's a, It could use a scrubbing, but everything's working. Pumps are good, no leaks. Just need to hit it with a sponge and flush it out. This is actually the easiest year it's been to set up. Keeping it covered with a tarp and draining it down early in the season worked out really well. No malfunctions, no cracks. I just said that, you know what I mean. And things are a mess. I had things so freaking clean out here, and then the wind came through and just whoosh, did what well, it did what the wind does. There's like construction materials from up the hill and got leaves and grasses and things all over the place. It's a lot of work to get things cleaned up out here again. Like, look at I had all the pottery organized by size pottery, <laughs> my plastic pots. I had them organized by size and over here by this table because that's where I was going to be doing a bunch of repotting and just, phew, that's not a big deal. I think that'll take like, what, a minute to clean up if even. Even cushions. Why is there a cushion over there? The pillow over there. That shouldn't be there. I am so eager to start planting is <laughs> eating away at me but i really think just like one or two more weeks y'all saw the nurseries well some people walmart well i don't know about walmart but drove by didn't see anything there it's still gonna be a couple weeks still at least in my area that they have much to pick from and i won't have time to hit up the local nurseries for probably another week or two the majority of them aren't very close to home so this is a good time for cleaning and tidying and just preparing and the pool gets opened up next week cover comes off filter is going to be up and running I want to be out here more anyways once we have the nice background noise with the water and everything whole different vibe out here when the pool's up and running i've wanted to bring the peach tree planters around that i have two peach pots they are bonfire peaches that normally go on each side of the steps here during the springtime I, these would be it looks different it looked totally different when the cover's out in the pool but i think i should wait because it's gonna be easier to get the cover off if there's less things to have to stumble around so I'll you know, just hold off for a week. Just one more week. One more week, that's nothing, right? Oh, hanging basket. I can't wait to get the spring hanging basket done. I had to come inside. It's too freaking cold out there. It went from like 70 when it was sunny and it dropped. It's in the 40s now. Not all that pleasant anymore. And there's some big things that I have to hide from y'all just for one more week. It's going to be some big reveals in next week's video. Well, a, a big reveal next week and it's really hard to shoot around i want to overhype it it's something i'm very excited about but i have to hide it from y'all for now what are you doing what are you doing you being crazy yeah you're always being crazy yeah the hanging baskets this year i might not do the daffodils i always put daffodils in them and then some stock alyssum lots of things that smell really good because it's right by the window there but the daffodils fizzle out so quickly they're only pretty for like maybe a week and a half, two weeks, and then they're long and stringy. I don't know if I want that this year. We'll see. Have to wait and see what the nurseries even have. Oh, and the Heptacodium's starting to push out. This is, I was talking about this in the fall. This thing held on to a lot of its foliage throughout December. It had started to turn. A lot of it was red, and there was still hints of green in there. Still held on to its leaves for a long time, and it flushes out really early too. So it's not evergreen, but... You get a lot of interest out of this plant, considering it's a deciduous plant. So it's not quite year-round, but pretty dang close. And it grows really fast, too. This thing's easily tripled in size. I can't wait to see what it does this year. I only mention these things and, like, have these little mini random talks about plants that you're seeing. Because it's that time of year where people are thinking about what to put in the yard. Heptacodium, the Temple of Bloom from Proven Winners. It stays, I think, like 10 to 15 feet somewhere in there. They have beautiful, long sprays of almost crepe myrtle-esque, esque, not quite, but something like you would get with a panicle hydrangea or a crepe myrtle cones of flowers that come out on the end in like September, when most other things are fizzled out and done blooming. So you get that color with them and then the long-lasting foliage. And really pretty fall color, too, when you have more of a normal fall. We didn't really have a normal fall. So it had some nice color on it, but it wasn't until, like, I don't know, late December. Hey, Pumpkin, I'm sorry. Gave the kitten all the attention. I know the queen's down here. How you doing, sweetie? Such a good pumpkin. Yeah, I'm really excited for next week. One, to show you what's going on, and because it's got so much cleaning to do. In a lot of years, I wait 
until spring and then do a huge garden cleanup. This year, I've been keeping things... I know it doesn't look like it. I'll, I'll get to this in just a second. I've been keeping things pretty tidy around the rest of the patio and just compiling my mess into one spot. Because people really enjoy the cleaning videos, and so I have, like, my recycling pile, I have some trash and some things to donate, and then the things that blew away that I need to go gather and get put back together in dead arb that is starting to push out some green. So I'm going to go out there at some point and try and prune off all the brown. I held on to the brown arbs because some of y'all said, hey, if you cut them back, sometimes they'll flush back out the next year with some greens. Wind blew it over, so it looks extra ridiculous right now, but I think I may as well chop that back. She is hyped, really hyped up right now. Someone's bumming about this weather. It just started to rain. He gets so sleepy and so sad when the rain moves in. I know, I just want to go outside and play too. One more week, Turbo. At least that's what I keep telling myself. One more week. Just a few more days, Magnolia's looking great, isn't it? You can barely see it. I need to take these down. That's not necessary anymore. They were blocking on a good amount of sun, but the sun shifted. So now they serve no purpose. They just look messy. What did you get? Did you get a coconut liner off the table? This cat will play with absolutely anything. Oh no, you have a toy. There is a toy underneath the coconut liner. Well, this has been fun. I would like to do more. I know y'all like longer videos, but I'm not just gonna walk around and ramble aimlessly, at least not any more than I already have, and it's rain, well, it's misting. I don't want to take the camera out. I'm not going out in the grow space. I know tropical plants should go look at the tropical plants. I just sprayed the neem out there last night. It stinks, gives me a headache, makes me nauseous. I don't want to go out there. So this has been fun. It's a, it is kind of fun, the planning time of year. The time of year where I have to be so careful where I put the camera because there are things that y'all can't see yet. What do you have going on in your gardens? Fun plans, plants that you're looking forward to getting to the ground. There's some fun new introductions this year. There are a couple new cold hardy, supposedly cold hardy colocasias I'm going to be trying this year. I'm looking forward to talking about those when and if they come in. It's, I don't want to talk about them too soon because I never actually know what's going to ship out, but there are two new types that are supposed to be pretty tough and can take some cold and lots of gingers. I've ordered a whole bunch of different curcumas. Well, not a whole bunch of different ones, a whole bunch of curcumas the Bang Rai Red and Sangria, some of my favorites. A ton of gladiolas because, okay, I didn't, you don't, y'all didn't even know this. So the reason I went to Sam's Club was because that's where I usually buy the bulk colladium bulbs. They said they had them online, went in the store, they didn't actually have them. Also a great spot to get gladiola bulbs, but I was just too late. Usually I buy those in like late January, early February when they get in, but I didn't get around to it this year. So I'm not gonna be planting a ton of colladiums this year, which is fine, we do it every year. Not a big deal. But that reminded me that I do want to plant gladiolas. It's just a thing. My mom used to plant them when I was a kid. It's a nostalgia issue. I want to just put in a huge patch of like, I don't know, a hundred, something like that, I think is what I ordered. This will be fun and exciting. Ooh, lots of pruning to do. Lots of cleanup. I can't wait to get out there with the pruning shears and start chopping away at things, get the hydrangeas cut back. Things will start shaping up. Yeah, what do y'all have planned? Got some fun things you're gonna put in the ground? He just melted. You just melted over here, didn't you, baby? Yeah, thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Rare occasion we hit up some nurseries and don't actually come back with some plants, but the things are just getting started. Why are you so sleepy, baby? Do you go on a... Well, I almost said the W word. It's raining. He's gonna have to wait. So, baby, he's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. Hi, kids. Mm -hmm. You show off that pretty face. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.